Listen, I am not the same woman that I was at the beginning of 2023, so I can make no promises for the person that I have become versus the person that I thought that I was going to be. I am going to say <laughs> that out of the 23 books that I wanted to read in 2023, Honey, if we're being honest, you've got a big storm. I hope I read half. Coming. Not even hope. I would say a goal, stretch goal, is that I read half of these because I honestly don't remember what's on this list. I've tried to not look at, uh, I mean, I looked at like the thumbnail so I can tell you a few, but knowing who I was then, um, we'll see. So here's what I'm thinking we should do. Categorize this into I've read, I haven't read and I'm still interested in, and I haven't read and I'm not interested in anymore, or at least not for right, I'm not interested right now. And then decide if I think I'm going to make a list of 24 books for 2024. Right off the bat, before we even get started, RIP to my plant corner. Because the second that I found Miss Willow Willow underneath my porch and brought her in, she doesn't eat plants, but she likes to dig in the dirt and dig up the big chunks of orchid bark that I have in the soil and play with that. So a lot of my plants, gone. I think one of those big plants behind me on that shelf, including the ones that were on the floor, has survived. And it's not looking good. My hair is finally getting back though to around that length. After I had the unfortunate supercuts coconut haircut. I had no idea what was coming for me in such a short amount of time. And I'm finally, finally growing it back a little bit. I've been wondering this. Do we think my hair is as long? Almost, maybe a little bit shorter, almost there. This is a 37 minute long video. Okay, I do now have an entire bookshelf set up. I since have gone to Ikea. Should I get the books? Fine, fine, I have to change out my camera battery anyway. You convinced me. Yes, Lexa, you should get the books. I'm so glad that I did that. See, but now I'm finding- Oh my god, that, like, I... there are so many plants that are now dead. Like I was saying before, number one is the Priory of the Orange Tree. This is a thick book, but I feel like it's deceiving. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did in fact read the Priory of the Orange Tree not too long after this video was filmed, and I was so excited about it, and I absolutely hated it. So maybe we should categorize this into read and liked, read and didn't like, still want to read and don't want to read. Maybe those will be the four categories. It was one of my worst slash most disappointing books of the year. I wanted to love it so much. I just thought it was so unnecessarily long. It was so word vomity. But I am still open to reading the prequel to this because, which I think is called Our Day of Fallen Night, Day of Fallen Night, something like that. Because I think that that is the story that she actually wanted to tell the entire time I was reading this book. I was thinking that she wanted to tell like what had happened before and that actually sounded more interesting than the story that we were in right now. The next book is Strange the Dreamer by Lonnie Taylor. Yeah, no, I didn't read that. I am still interested in it. I did not realize that it was not a standalone. It's a duology, which I think then did make me a little bit more hesitant to read it. Maybe this will like put it back on my radar a little bit because I do still really want to read that. And I still could not really tell you what it's about. Next on the list is Bunny by Moda Awad. This is so high up there. I want to read this. Guess what? I did read it. It was high up on that list. It was my vibe. In fact, it was my favorite standalone book of the year. Possibly one of my favorite standalone books of all time. I would say yes. I feel pretty confident saying that. I am a bunny girly. It's weird. Kayla's review of ha 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 what the fuck on Goodreads pretty much says it all. I get why people don't love it and I ate that shit up. The next one is on its way to me. So I counted it under uh, my physical TBR, but I just bought it. Might be cheating. But that is Ember of the Ashes. I have seen this cover and I've, I feel like I've heard people talk about it, but what really sold me on it was I went to one of my local, it's like my favorite local book club that we have here at one of the bars in my town. And I met this girl who I feel like we could be best friends, but I'm really awkward with making friends in real life. That's still true still true. But at that particular one, it was the December book club. So they also did like a book exchange where everyone wrapped up a book and then brought it and we got to pick and kind of like white elephant it. And the book that she brought was the first book in the Ember of the Ashes series. And she said it was like her favorite fantasy series of all time. I am so glad that I watched this because I completely forgot that that's how I came across the series. I had heard about it before, but that was what really sold me on it. And that's what ended up getting me to buy the entire series, except I actually think I am missing one of the books. And it's like a random middle one because I thought I ordered and I didn't and I still haven't ordered the rest of it. I have not read this yet. Let's just get that out of the way. I am still very interested, but I want to do a reading vlog reading the entire series. I think that I enjoy series more that way when I read them back to back. And there were just too many other series and then I got into that slump of reading where I thought that starting another fantasy series probably wasn't a good idea. So I put that on hold, but I am still very interested in it and hopefully can make that video in 2024. Oliver, no, leave your sister alone. Speaking of uh, series that I have in mind for that, 
reading series of books series, Akatar by Sarah J Maas. And I only own this book so far. I have since bought the entire series because I did want to do a reading vlog where I read the entire series. And again, I still want to do that. But again, I'm a little intimidated because the girlies love it so much and everyone in my life is recommending it to me. And I'm nervous I'm not going to love it. So yes, I do own the whole thing. Yes, I am still interested but I am nervous to read it. And I feel like I've just got to be in that headspace and that headspace is going to have to be after I get just a little bit of a break after the disappointment of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. The next book that I really, really want to read, but I need to be in the right headspace for it. I know I definitely need to be in the right headspace for it. Oh, I know what this is and Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I knew the second that I started talking about this that I hadn't read it yet. I only read one nonfiction book this entire year. And I think that that was again because of the reading slump that I was in. I also consumed a lot of the nonfiction books and like the memoirs that I read last year through audiobooks and I just wasn't listening to those as much. I don't know if it's just like the interface of Scribd which is now like Everend or whatever. I don't click on it as much and I don't like actually find books naturally. Like I was finding books off of that app to read. I was picking out books based off of scrolling on the app and it's just not like as user friendly to me right now. And that's where I was finding a lot of the memoirs and nonfiction books that I was reading and I just haven't read more yet. So yeah, I only read one nonfiction book. It wasn't that, but I still am and will always be interested in that book until I read it. Next book is also a nonfiction. Before I got back into my love of reading, reading nonfiction still felt like reading for school, like having to read. So I needed to rediscover that love of fiction and reading just for fun. And I feel like that is even more the headspace that I've been in last year. I'm gonna go ahead and say clearly that I probably didn't read this book. I don't think it's the one that I read. I think it might be the one I DNF'd. I really want to read Hood Feminism. I bought this at the beginning of the year last year. Yes, I DNF that book, but not because I wasn't enjoying it. I started reading that in the middle of reading The Raven Cycle, which if you have been on this channel, you might know how that went. That like like took me by storm. Ended up, that's my favorite series. Ended up just completely changing my life and then put me in a huge slump. So I wanted to read that entire series while I was at my dad's and I had also brought Hood Feminism with me. And I was realizing that like, I was listening to the audiobook of Hood Feminism, but I also wanted to be taking notes and like highlighting in the book. But I was sitting by the pool and I would like, my focus would go in and out. And then I just fell so much in love with The Raven Cycle that I, DNF'd every single book that I was reading on that trip because I was reading a few others and I just haven't come back to that one yet but that is also again still on the top of my list of books that I want to read oh no <sighs> switching back gears we have a YA horror book Horrid by Katrina Leno yeah. bing, 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 bing. yes I did in fact read that we're we're back we've got one um I didn't like it I wouldn't say I hated it but it was just really disappointing compared to what I thought it was going to be this was one of those like YA horror but it's like is this supernatural or is this mental illness I listened to the audiobook while I did a puzzle one day it was fine it just wasn't my favorite I don't know we'll have to see with Katrina Leno I don't know if I would again put her on a list of like definite books I want to read in here but I could see myself reading from her again and I like own a few more books from her. I just don't think that this was the one for me. Next book that is on my list is Legendborn. What? What am I saying? The next book that is on my list is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. No, I haven't read that book. I am going to still put this in the interested category. I wouldn't say I'm less interested in it. I would just say like, I feel like the second book came out around the time that I was filming this first video and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. Like I feel like I heard so many people talk about Legendborn when the first one came out and then I didn't hear a lot about it after the second book, which makes me a little bit nervous that maybe the second book wasn't as good. Who knows? So maybe if more people are talking about it when the next book in the series comes out, I'll get a little bit more interested, but I will say that like, it's not on the top of my list anymore. So is that technically not interested? It's not so not interested that I would get rid of the book or say I'm absolutely never gonna read it. But I think on the list of things that I wanna read, it's kind of low on there. Okay, so maybe I talked myself into putting it in not interested. I would say tentatively could be persuaded to be interested again. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I want to dive more into the Cosmere this year. Maybe it's not The Way of Kings, maybe. Well, I would like to read The Way of Kings, but I also hate it because I know it's not a complete series. I think that this inclusion was a lofty, lofty goal of mine. I'm still so excited. I love Brandon Sanderson. I've, I'm in the middle of rereading Mistborn right now. 
I love his writing. I'm so excited to start The Way of Kings, but I don't know how, again, I want to go about reading it since it is an ongoing series and it's going to be an ongoing series for so long. And I think that that has stopped me from reading it. They are floppy as hell though, which I do appreciate. The next is also an adult fantasy series, but this one is a trilogy and it's complete. And I've actually started reading this, but then my hold was up at the library and I had some other things I had to read. So I stopped reading it. I only got like a couple of chapters in, but I loved the couple of chapters I read. And that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. I wanted to check, make sure it was Fonda Lee. Okay, say it with me. <laughs> I haven't read it, but I want to because I want to read it all at the same time. I do own all of the books to that entire series. I've heard really good things. I did like the start of it. I just got into a reading slump with fantasy series and I know that I will get back to it. And I feel like I'm now, especially this reread of Mistborn is kind of helping me to get back into that. It was just so hard for me to get past how much I loved the Raven cycle and being okay with things not being that and it not having to be the best thing that I've ever read every time you know it's not on the top of my list but I definitely know I'm gonna get there hopefully before I feel like less people just talk about it now too because the third and final book came out and so many people had mixed opinions about whether they loved it or hated it maybe I need to get on that fast before everyone stops talking about it because I feel like I haven't heard people talking about it in months not that you can only read things that people are talking about but just because I'm worried that if I don't read it soon maybe it'll just keep getting pushed back and I'll never read it. <laughs> Next is A Dowry of Blood and this is an adult fantasy. Not only did I read that, but it also did make my favorite books of the year. So, love. I have this gorgeous special edition copy of it. I absolutely loved it. The way that it described uh, the dynamics and the feelings of emotional abuse in relationships and what that feels like and how you can feel on the receiving end of that just felt like the author looked into my mind and like looked into the past of the relationship that I was in for four years and then put beautiful words that felt exactly how I was feeling. And it's told in letters, so it's a really quick read because sometimes it's only like this much on a page. Oh, this no. one, because I feel oh, like no, it's no, going to no, be a romance no. that I love a lot. Oh, no. And that is Seven Days in June. What kind of person did I think I was going to be? This was the version of Lexa that was still holding out hope that romance could be for me. I think I'm learning more about myself that I need romance as a subplot fantasy with a romance subplot, horror with a romance subplot, or I need some of those speculative magical elements in it. And I do think that if a romance that doesn't have those is going to work for me, it's probably going to be something like Seven Days in June. Is this high up on my list anymore? No, just because I don't. I still am interested in it though. I just would not put this on a list like this again. At where I'm at right now with my reading. So again, I'm going to put this in the not interested, knowing that so far not interested is really just meant like not for me at this point in time. Next book, Babel by R.F. Kwong. This is on the top of my to read list. Yeah, I don't read that. Oh, and here's the thing. <sighs> I don't know if I'm still interested in it. Maybe again, this would be a good one for me to listen to on audiobook. And I just need to let go of this idea of it. Like, I think now that the hype has died down a little bit, I actually might be in a better place to be reading this because I can go in not thinking it's going to be this all time amazing favorite because I honestly don't know if it's going to. I loved the Poppy War the first couple of books and then I really hated the third book in the series, which I know is not a popular opinion. And I don't know if this literary kind of fantasy is for me, but it could be via audiobook. I'm interested, but it never is a book that I think of when I think of like, what's the next book that I want to read? I'm not going to get rid of the copies that I have because I might end up reading it in the future and I could see myself becoming that kind of reader that could really enjoy it. I just don't know if it's for me right now. Seasonal Fears by Shauna McGuire. This is the second book in the middle game series. I really hope that this book, not this book, <laughs> I really hope that this video isn't boring because I haven't read so many of them. She didn't, like they have officially announced the third book that's coming out in that series. Listen, if nothing else, maybe this is just a good testament to like why I don't do TBRs unless I do them knowing that I'm like really not going to read them. I do them for fun and to like react to all the books that I don't read, but also that it's okay if like you don't read as much as you thought that you were going to or that you don't read as much as you did last year or last month or last week, or if you're reading cha taste change, or if you buy an entire series and then take years to start it or never start it. You're not alone at least. So Middle Game, the first book in this series, my one of my favorite books of all time. Seasonal Fears was the second book and I heard so many mixed reviews. In fact, I don't even know if I heard a lot of people who really liked it, to be honest. And I think that's because the expectations were Middle Game with different characters and it had a different vibe. And I heard some people say that they incorporated the characters from Middle Game too much. I heard some people say that they didn't incorporate them enough. Roger and Dodger are two of my favorite characters ever written. So love that. I would love to see more of them, but I don't know how I'm going to like that in a different setting. But they did announce book three, Title Creatures, and that is coming out June 4th of 2024. So there is going to be a third book. And I have so much hope for this series. 
and I want it to keep going and I want everyone to keep buying this series so this series will continue on because I love Shauna McGuire so much. So I think that the announcement that there is in fact going to be a third book because part of me was a little worried that because so many people didn't like the second one, they weren't gonna continue. And if that was the case, I just wanted to leave it at middle game as a standalone and love that for what it was. But now that I know for sure that they are carrying on in the series and they've announced a release date for that, it makes me a little bit less nervous going into book two, knowing that I have hope for where book three is gonna go and that maybe book two was just a different vibe or maybe I will still vibe with book two. And I have so many Kindle credits from that like book deal thing that Amazon does with the points and stuff that I try to go through the Kindle deals and see if they have any every day so that my points don't expire. What an interesting shout out because I was just talking to my partner about this. When Kindle first rolled out, like when Amazon first rolled out that like Kindle points, I think that something was like glitching or they didn't realize that this was happening where you were getting points for like the full price of the book if you bought a Kindle book, even if you're buying it on like a deal. So I go on Kindle daily deals a lot and look to see if there's any books that like I might want to read or I might want the Kindle version of for like a dollar or two. But it was giving you the amount of points as if you bought the book full price. And on top of that, there was also a lot of like buy one, get one 50% off for physical books. And I bought myself a lot of physical books uh, around Christmas time last year. So I was getting a lot of points for that. So I had like so many $3 credits. I'm not getting as many anymore because they fixed that one glitch where like you only do get the amount of points based on how much you're spending and I just don't think I've been buying as many physical books since I've been having to read more on my Kindle because of I think it's carpal tunnel I, I can't imagine what else it would be with my wrist they hurt so fucking much because my entire life is done on a computer an e-reader or a phone so holding physical books has just been really hard for me and it makes me a little bit sad and I can't talk about it too much right now because I'm still processing it which I guess this is a good thing to be talking about with this list because this is 23 books that I physically owned copies of because I wanted to get through my physical TBR and then about halfway through the year my wrist really started becoming an issue and it I stopped reading so many physical books and because I don't come to like my bookshelves to look at books anymore I've been mainly browsing online and seeing what's available on Libby and stuff I just think that there's a good chance that I haven't gotten to many of these that might be on this list because I haven't been looking at what physical books do I want to read with the intention of getting through my physical TBR because I know that either way like if I have the physical copy unless it's a super floppy paperback or if it's a hardback that I can sit open but then I have to like sit at a desk or something it's just not my ideal way of reading right now my kindle has been so much easier and more accessible I haven't been going to my red like my to be read shelves to be looking for books to read and at the time I had just bought so many books that like I was in the headspace of okay you bought all these books now you need to fucking read them and I still love being around my books and I'm glad that I bought them and I love like walking into this room and seeing like all of these books and being surrounded by them it's just that my relationship with how I read is changing a little bit and maybe it'll get back but for right now I'm just not reading as many physical books as I am ebooks or audiobooks and I've been really wanting to read a lot away so I bought it on Kindle I did start Alats Away, but that was another book that I was reading while I was in Florida and started The Raven Cycle. And I DNF'd all of those books. And it's not that I wasn't enjoying it. I just know I'd have to reread the entire thing because I don't remember enough of it. So I'm going to have to go back through and just like start it over. I would say I paused for now. Who is it that, is it Brie from The Lock Booktician? I feel like I've said this before. Back before I was really into booktube, I was watching, I like somehow got on reading sprints and I was on one of her reading sprints and she talked about pause for now it doesn't feel as final as DNF does, which might mean that my count is so off because I'm, who, kn who knows? I'll calculate this all at the end. The next two books, I'm gonna be honest, are new additions to this list. First one is The Year of the Witching. Yeah, I still wanna read it. <laughs> no, I haven't read it. I don't know. I just feel like I'm a broken record at this point. This is actually a book that was in my head when I was just talking about not going to my physical TBR to decide what I was going to read and that affecting what books I choose to read because I so like this is I would still put this on a list of books like high up on the top that I do want to read next year because of my ADHD and needing those physical like those visual reminders for things to remind myself that things exist. And I haven't been doing that with the books that I own. I just keep forgetting to add this one. But this is so wonderful that I want to read. It's a standalone. It's witchy. I loved House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson and I think we've definitely officially passed hope that I will have read uh, at least 
half of this. We're gonna see this through to the end. And I'm, maybe if we just have one more, that's gonna be my new hope. We're, we're changing expectations, friends. Okay, we're going with, hopefully I have read at least one more book on this list. So it was sold out on like everywhere for a really long time. It just came back on Amazon, but for full price. Before I even say it, it's not gonna be this one, bestie. It's not gonna be this one. And this again, I feel like has fallen into, everyone was talking about it so much because the sequel to it was coming out at the beginning of the year when I filmed this. And I have not heard people talking about it much since. And this one I found for $8. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Yes, this is on Kindle Unlimited. And I literally, the other day was in the bathroom thinking about books as one does. And I had this epiphany of like, why did I buy the, why was I so obsessed with buying the hardcover of this when I knew it wasn't a duology? I know I prefer paperbacks to hardcovers. And unless I thought, maybe I just thought I was gonna be the kind of person that like read, I, I think maybe it was the hype, right? Like everyone was reading the second book. People had waited so long for Hellbent to come out and I wanted Hellbent and Ninth House. And in order to do that, I would have needed the hardcover of Ninth House if I wanted matching editions. But now I still haven't bought Hellbent because I didn't end up reading them because it's not a duology. And it's hard for me to start series that aren't completed yet. And if I'm going to start one, I just don't, I wouldn't put that one as the one I would think I would start. So now I have a hardcover version of Ninth House. Oh, Oliver brought me a Massey Mouse to play fetch. You wanna play fetch? But I don't own the hardcover of Hellbent and soon the paperback is probably gonna come out if it hasn't already. <laughs> Hello. Here we are. Do I still want to read Ninth House? Yeah, but not right now. Because it took so long for the second book, Hellbent, to come out. Who knows when the third book is going to come out, if it's a trilogy. And I heard mixed things, like mixed reviews on Hellbent. So I just don't know. I think it was, I just fell into the hype. I think we're removed enough from that person that I was to admit that it was the hype. But also I found it for $8 when I couldn't find the hardcover literally anywhere in stores because everyone was buying the hardcover so they could buy a matching edition of Hellbent. So I did at least get a good deal. If you close your eyes and don't think about it. <laughs> and that is Legends and Lattes. Because no, I have not read Legends and Lattes. <laughs> and yes, I am still interested in it. I do actually now own a beautiful special edition of Legends and Lattes too. I was holding out on this because I thought I wanted to do a series of reading coffee themed books in a coffee shop, which maybe I will still do, but then I really thought about it and I thought, Lexa, you hate looking like you're filming in public. You hate people knowing you're filming. So are you gonna wanna film enough to make that make sense? But I really just like wanted to do it and try out local coffee shops. But So maybe I will, maybe more during the winter when it's like cozy coffee shop winter vibes, or maybe I will just read this whenever I need. I feel like that would be a better way to reframe this. Maybe I need to get out of that idea because I have so many other video ideas that I don't need to execute all of the ones that I think of. And maybe I need to accept that that's a better idea in theory in ex than an execution for me as a content creator and instead put this on the list in my mind of books I can read as a break from some of like the heavier books. The rest of these I would all put under the category of anticipated 2023 releases. One more Lexa, one more book is all we're holding out for. And I will say knowing the rest are anticipated 2023 releases. I don't know, does that increase my chances? Cause I did try to make an effort to read more 2023 releases this year. The first one that I own physically is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I will be honest with you. Yay, 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 yay. Pew, 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 pew. This is the book I was just thinking, if there's any hope, it's this one. And there is. And I read this for the Goodreads Choice Awards where I read all of the horror books. Fantastic news. I loved it. And it actually, I think I meant to put it, did I not talk about this uh, during my favorite books of the year? I guess I didn't put this in my list of honorable mentions for best books of the year, but I think that there's an argument that could be made to put it on that list. We'll have to see. It might just be that I've read it, like it's too close to when I've read it. And that here in a few months, it's gonna be something that I forget about. But that book was such a plot twist from what I thought it was going to be. First off, I kept telling you all, oh my God, I can now see if I was also saying this. Hold on, let's look. But this, I believe follows uh, two, like a brother and sister maybe, and their parents died from COVID. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. Okay, this is what I wanted to know, is that somewhere, in, I was talking about this in my Goodreads vlog, that both in the reacting to the Goodreads horror nominees, video. And I thought in this video, I told you all that this was about adults whose parents died from COVID and then they had to fix up their house, whatever. And then it was haunted. That's a f no. <laughs> I think what I discovered throughout my reading process while I was reading all of those books 
is that I think I got this somewhere in my head mixed up with the plot of Holly by Stephen King because they both have houses on the front of them and in that book her mom dies from COVID-19 and COVID is like a part of the characters lives in Holly. It is not at all in How to Sell a Haunted House and I was just out here confidently spreading that misinformation and I was so like I was thinking did I really say that in that 23 books I want to read in 2023 and here yes I did and I think that that just really solidified in my mind a fake plot that I made up it's not about that their parents do die it's not really a haunted house vibe it's like punk puppet vibes which I think took a lot of people by surprise fair enough because it's really not mentioned in the synopsis and it's literally the entire plot of the book and the vibes are weird it's not cozy horror but it's like there were intense scenes so much so that like I had to stop reading this late at night right before I was going to bed because it was giving me nightmares but it, it, it it's like weird it's campy but I think Grady Hendrix kind of is sometimes so I think that's just the vibe but their parents did not die from COVID-19 <laughs> And I'm glad that we have discovered that I have been spreading lies since the beginning of 2023 and we did at least accomplish our goal of reading one more book from this list. Let's see if we can exceed our goal. The next anticipated release that I do own physically and I actually think the last one that I own physically is Alone With You in the Ether by Olive Lee Blake. Oh my god I had no idea that I had this book on this list and yes I did read it and Yes, it made my top favorite books of the year. Okay, so listen, we might have discovered that I didn't read a lot of my anticipated books. However, the books that I did read, other than the two that I hated, or w at least one that I hated, I can't remember what the other book was that I read and said I didn't like, I'm loving the ones that I did. Like, love, love, love. Like, favorites. So I am so gonna call that a win, and I'm so ecstatic. It was the 2023 releases that really came through. I love Olive E. Blake. I talked more about why I loved this book in my favorites of the year video, which if it's up right now, I don't know what order I'm going to end up posting them in. I'll leave it up in the cards. That was a good one. I really loved that. I loved it so much that I gave my copy that I highlighted and annotated to my mom and then requested a paperback version for Christmas so that I can reread and highlight and annotate it again. <laughs> I'm sad. Like I think people for the Kickstarter got it in January. One of his, like, okay, I won't shut up and stop talking. What I'm about to say is trust of the Emerald Sea. I can tell you before past Lexa can tell you because she went off so on some tangent. And that one, I guess you could technically classify it as pause for now because I did read the first few chapters. And again, it's not something that I DNF'd because I didn't want to read it. It was just that I had something else that I had to read at the time. I don't remember what it was and then I ended up putting that down and I figured I would come back to it and I actually ended up coming back to it well I thought I did because I was going to get the Kindle copy from Libby but it's not a Kindle copy it's like an ebook on the Libby app copy which I've never had a book do before that it wasn't available to read on your Kindle it's only available to read on your phone on the Libby app and that is not what I want to do so I ended up just returning that and I'll have to read the physical version and then the last and final one we are putting the vibes out into the universe that this happens okay last year the next book in the Nevermore series was supposed to come out and it did not. It got pushed back and then it got pushed back again. And now it got pushed back to like October of this year. Oh no, 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 bestie. I have such bad news for you. Oh bestie, I have the worst news for you. Yeah, that didn't come out. And as the years go by, I'm starting to get a little less hopeful. I would say with it since, cause it, I thought it was coming out. I almost reread all of the books at the beginning of October in anticipation that it was coming out in October. And then I was, I can't remember who it was. Was it Jess? I think that may have broke the news to me in one of the vi their videos. I can't remember exactly, but someone was like, yeah, no, did, did we all see that it's, it got pushed back again? Like, oh no. And I think because of that, I've been like emotionally detaching from it a little bit more because I remember when I first read the Nevermore series that like, I thought people were talking about it as it was supposed to be this like super long series. Like it was going to keep going like 12 books or something like that. And I was so excited for that to kind of take the place of Harry Potter because like like most queer kids Harry Potter was my thing and then fucking JK Rowling went off the fucking rails and now it's not so Nevermore is not the same as Harry Potter and I don't want to make that comparison because I just don't think that does 
any book that you're making a comparison to adjust it like it, it stands on its own and it's great but it is like a middle grade magical school kind of vibe and I loved it so much but now that it's taking so long and I think this is the second time second or third time that this book has gotten pushed back I think that I just uh, have subconsciously started disconnecting just in case the series doesn't continue so in my defense I did not read that but that's because the book doesn't exist yet so I guess I'll put that under like still interested because I am interested whenever if it does come out I'm just a little less hopeful that it will yeah I <laughs> uh-huh I'm definitely gonna have to go back through and do some calculations because I have 27 tallies if my counting is correct, one, two, three, four, I think I read six. That's not 12, that's for sure. That is about a quarter. Realizing I didn't think going into this about the added complication of the fact that I'm not reading as many of my physical, like I'm not reading my TBR, physical TBR as much, and then therefore not referencing my physical TBR. I do think that this makes sense. And I also think this is just for fun, shits and gigs. I knew that I hadn't read most of them and that's okay. You know, and if nothing else, hopefully this makes you feel like whatever is happening with your reading right now and however your plans have changed from the kind of reader that you thought you were gonna be, how much you thought that you were gonna read, it's totally okay. We're all just having a good time. It's not a race or a competition. And past Lexa will continue to be delusional about my reading. But this was so much fun. I'll have to decide. I'm either going to make a 30 before 30 or a 24 and 24. I just feel like at some point it's gonna get to too many books, especially when I'm not reading as many. Like I read I think 220 books in 2023 and I think 139 or 140 books so far. I, there's a few days left in the year but like basically this year. And 40 of those were in the month of January. I think that my reading has definitely changed and decreased and I'm not so much worried about the amount of books as I am about just like really enjoying the books that I'm reading and being okay with DNFing things. I DNFed a lot of books. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video. What books are on your list of books that you want to read here in 2024? Put a little sun emoji down in the comments if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time. Bye!